one thing I just kind of wanted to point out to you is that, you know, we talk about the enduring understanding in our purpose for book clubs all the time, but really those same goals do apply um, when we're talking about math. We are here to communicate with each other and to share our thoughts and our questions and ideas, not about the novel, but about a math concept. Uh, we're here to collaborate with each other. And so that means, you know, obviously work through problems, um, ask each other questions, ask me questions and get it solved when we're talking about math concepts. So these goals really do apply across the board. It's not just in book club. Um, of course, critical thinking um, that comes in with math when you have people who think about things in a different way. So um, and creativity, there's a lot of different ways that we can apply these math concepts in real life. And that takes a little bit of creativity or there's a lot of different ways to solve problems. Um, and so that's creative. Oh, it looks like somebody is arriving. So that's awesome. So we'll have at least one more person with us. All right, so let's just take a look at what we're going to be doing today. Um, remember, I always send this agenda out ahead of time. So if you ever have a question about something that you came across in your math work or just a question about math in general, um, make sure that you type it in in this little space here and we'll make sure that we Oh, wow. A lot of background noise. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off your microphones for just a second. It looks like Autumn is able to join us. Maybe she got a different computer up and running. That's awesome. Okay. So um, I will unmute everybody in just a second when we actually get started. I'm just going to kind of go over what we're doing today for those of us who just showed up. Um, we are going to review line segments. And so basically different types of lines. We'll play a really short game on line segments because this concept is probably the easiest one that you're working with, lines. And then we'll move into angles. And then we're going to switch gears and start talking about polygons. Um, hopefully we'll have time to get to triangles at the very end. I know some of these concepts are coming up in your future. You might not be um, there quite yet, but either way, um, hopefully we'll have time for all of it. And then quadrilaterals. Um, like I said, though, if we don't have time for us to get to every single concept today, I have shared this with you so you can go and look at these links because I've linked them. So you can click on those words and go to that website yourself as well. All right. Nicholas has a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, for triangles... Uh, is it all triangles are have a measure of 180 degrees or all right triangles? Oh, um, all triangles. All triangles, the angles inside of the triangle, all will add up to 180 degrees. It doesn't matter what type of triangle. That's a good question. Okay, so let's just take a look really quickly, like I said, at different types of lines. Just a little review if you have forgotten, um, so just kind of follow along with me. This is a point, obviously, um, pretty easy. <laughs> a line segment is a straight line that has two points or end points, okay? So that's a line segment. Notice what a ray has. It has only one point, and then it has an arrow that points in like any direction, and that just means that's an endless line. Go ahead, Nicholas. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying something. Um, what we call just a basic line has two arrows. That means it's endless in both directions. Intersecting lines, obviously intersecting means kind of like intersection. So they cross each other and they have that point in the center. And then parallel lines will never touch. They go on forever. Like if I continued this line out into forever, it would never touch this line that goes out until forever. So, all right, so those are just um, the types of lines we have. Let's just look at a couple practice problems. Okay, who can tell me what type of line this is? Is it a line, line segment, 
a ray? Or what type is this? Go ahead, Nicholas. Um, it's a, it, it seems like it would be a line segment except it has an arrow, but it, it could be a ray except it has two points. Yeah, it's a ray, actually. So if we go back to our picture, um, you can see that the ray only has one endless line or um, one endless point because of that, that arrow. And then it has one for sure point. So the name of this, and you can just see easily here by the letters, the name of it is either WV or VW. doesn't really matter. So I'll just type in VW. Oops. Why is it not letting me type? There we go. VW, and then I'm just going to pick the one that I see up here, which is the ray. And there we go. Okay, now notice the two arrows. So let's go back to our picture and see what type of line it is when you have two arrows. Okay, so let's see. So that's just a simple, and Autumn typed into the chat, that is a simple just line because there are two arrows on the end. And it is called A, B, or B, A. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. Perfect. Okay, so these are pretty easy. Um, here again, we have the two arrows on the end. So that means it is just a simple line. And it is called E, D, or D, E, whatever you want. And awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're probably ready to play just maybe one round of this game because we have a lot of other cool things to get to. Um, what I need for this game is a volunteer. Um, the volunteer is going to tell me, um, because I have to shoot something, and so the volunteer has to tell me what it is I need to shoot. Um, and so I can't have everybody doing it all at once. Um, let's play a couple rounds. And we're going to have Nicholas go first, and then I see Autumn wants to play maybe next. Okay, here we go. All right, let's do relaxed mode. We don't want to be timed yet. Okay, so I need to shoot a ray. Where do I go, Nicholas? Um, you would go where? Uh, yeah. yeah. Up, 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 up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I need a line. Um, it's, it's right up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Parallel lines. Um, two arrows. Okay. Intersecting lines. Uh, the X down there. Okay, good. A line segment. Uh, just no arrows. It's a little... That's yeah. right. Yeah. No yeah. arrows. Okay, just a point. Oh, that's easy. Another line segment. Uh, um, two yeah, endpoints, right? Well. Oh, a point. Okay, Th those are easy. Intersecting. Uh, down a little bit. Good. A simple line. Um, up, up, up. Uh, oh. no. <laughs> hey, that's all right. You did. And I'm sure you, if you had control of the mouse, would have done much better. So um, very cool. That was fun. So let's just kind of review. This is a line because it has the two arrows that with the endless, um, that just means it's endless. And then um, this is called a ray because it has one point and then one arrow. These are intersecting. That's pretty easy. And then these were the parallel lines. Okay, Autumn, um, are you there? Because I can hear you, I think. Your microphone's on. Autumn? I don't know if we can hear. Um, so, Autumn, it's going to be kind of hard for you. Okay, you're here. Um, can you say something? Because it's going to be kind of hard for you to play unless you talk. Are you ready? 
I'm not sure if your microphone's working. If you can hear me, tell me what I need to shoot. Okay, here we go. All right, I need to find a ray. Remember, a ray has, oh my goodness, this is getting harder. I think it's sitting here behind, oh shoot. A line segment has one end point. There we go. Oh no, just kidding. It has two end points. There we go. A line. There we go. Oh no, that's not a line. I'm sorry. A line has two arrows. Intersecting. There we go. Parallel. A point. Okay, that's easy. Intersecting. That one's easy. Point. Yay! All right, so this is pretty easy stuff, I would say. Um, let's see in the chat or if you have your uh, webcam on with a thumbs up or a thumbs down if line segments are pretty easy for you. Yeah, they're, they're not so hard. That was probably our easiest concept. Um, we are going to move into angles, and we have different types of angles. Right angles. That's right. Eight angles and over two angles. That's right. Okay. All right. So before I do this, I wanted to go. Here we go. I just wanted to show you the different types of angles so that you could see a picture of them. Okay. So just kind of follow along down here at the bottom. An acute angle. You can see. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the microphones. Um, you can see the pictures right here. Um, and obviously, it's kind of moving right now. But um, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. A right angle is that perfect end of a square, and that is 90 degrees. Obtuse angle means it's bigger than 90 degrees. So you can see how that measures bigger. A straight angle is just that flat line because this half circle measures 180 degrees. A reflex angle is, think of it as kind of like the backside of the angle. Does anybody remember how you find a reflex angle's measurement? Like if I had a compass and I wanted to measure this angle, um, how, would I, how would I do that? Go ahead, Nicholas. Oh, shoot, I have to turn your microphone on. There you go. Um, you do it by uh, measuring, it, like, a, it's an obtuse angle. Yeah. Because it, it's basically just, just an upside down, down obtuse angle. Right. So what you would do is you measure this angle, and then you subtract it from 360, right? Because if you look... This entire circle, if you just kind of follow my mouse, is 360 degrees. So if I found the measurement of this angle and I subtracted it from 360, that would tell me what this angle has to be. And then a full rotation, you can see right here, is 360 degrees. Okay. So here we go. Move the mouse to find the different types of angles. Okay, so do I have a volunteer to tell me about an acute angle and tell me where I should stop? Okay, Lucas. Stop. stop. Okay, and this is perfect. Oh, wow. This is perfect because it is less than 90 degrees. So I could actually go all the way up to 89 degrees. Oops. Oh, it's too hard for me to stop on 89. But I could go all the way up there and it's still called an acute angle. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Jacob, maybe you could tell me in my chat where to stop if I wanted an obtuse angle. So just type in stop when you want me to. Me? 
Okay, he wants me to stop right here. Uh, no, I was waiting for uh, Jacob to type into the chat. Yes, Hello. that is correct. I could go all the way from 90 degrees, 91 degrees, from 91 all the way to 179, and then it's an obtuse angle. Once I hit 180, it becomes a straight angle. Once I go bigger than 180, it becomes a reflex angle. And then you can notice that full circle makes it 360 degrees, full rotation. All right, so that was pretty cool. We don't have any games for angles. So let's, um, let's just make up a game. Cool. You can give me, just kind of look around, um, look around your house, look around your desk, wherever you're at. Who could give me an example of maybe a right angle that you see right in front of you? Ooh. Go ahead, Nicholas. Uh, the screen for uh, my PlayStation 3. Yes. If you think and of like your screen yeah or even your computer monitor the edge over here is a 90 degree square angle perfect 90 degree angles are actually pretty easy to find um i'm looking at the corner of my desk that is a 90 degree angle lucas what's another example um i, I see my cross the uh, the part where i go like this yeah, definitely. Does anybody have um, something that they could grab and hold up to their <laughs> webcam that's 90 degrees? Perfect. <laughs> yes, Lucas, then point to where um, the 90 degree part is. Right here. That's right. That's right. Good. And then Jacob says in the chat, there are a ton of angles in front of me. So let's make this a little bit more difficult. Let's find an example of an acute angle. So something that's smaller than 90 degrees. Maybe you need to just grab a couple things and make one. Um, let's get creative. Oh, Nicholas, that's perfect. Point to um, the section that is less than 90 degrees. Yeah, hold that up again. Oh, awesome. So you see in the hanger there, that is less than 90 degrees. Perfect. Yes, go ahead, Lucas. I, I see something in the box. Oh. Yes, yes. All of those little um, angles you can see are less than 90 degrees. That's perfect. You guys are... See, and see, this is part of math in real life. Um, and this is, I mean, think of like the real life type of jobs that have to do this kind of thing. Like an architect is one that comes to mind right away. But I mean, even like a city planner, um, if they are planning where they're going to put a road, where they're going to put, um, you know, a street corner, all of these things come into play and you need to know how to measure angles, how to recognize angles and so forth. Um, how about an obtuse angle? Right here. Oh my goodness. That's perfect, Nicholas. And look, Lucas is holding up um, two paper clips that he just kind of made look bigger than 90 degrees. You guys are so smart. This is awesome. A reflex angle would be kind of hard to show, um, you know, in real life, but we, we know what that is. It's bigger than 100. Good. Yeah, show us. Right here. Perfect. So that is bigger than 180 degrees, and we could call that the reflex angle. Um, a straight angle would be pretty easy. Find something that is a straight angle. Look at Lucas. He's holding up those, and Nicholas is pointing to the bottom of the hanger. Wow. You guys, A plus today for the angles. That's great. Uh, yay! Yeah. All right. That was pretty fun. Um, so actually, I'll, I'll challenge you, you know, just throughout your day to just kind of start noticing more and more angles as you are. Um... Yes, go ahead, Nicholas. Uh, um, when, I, uh, when I'm done with my schoolwork every week, uh, 
I uh, study the golden ratio, aka five. Yeah. It's as simple as if you do a five of a circle. Right. Uh, you, and you make, like, if you want to draw, make a spiral, different, a different number of spirals, um, like a flower, you can draw each petal 135 five degrees away from each other, and they'll never overlap. Wow. And you make these spirals of petals. That's awesome, Nicholas. You know what you should do? For next week, you should, you know, just bring an example of it and hold it up to the webcam for us. And then it's easier when we're able to see it. But you're right. It, drawing those spirals, um, they would never overlap. That's really cool. Well, if you take a pine cone, you can count the spirals and their Fibonacci numbers. See? We're learning something new. Awesome. Well, um, we don't want to well, um, short... We don't want to shortchange the rest of what we need to get to today, so we are going to move on to polygons. So we have two different um, lessons for polygons. We have Brain Pop, and then we have our little friends. Um, oh, I don't even know how to describe them, but you, you've seen them before. Our little strange friends. Um, so let's take a vote. Would we rather watch Brain Pop, or would we rather watch our strange friends? Go ahead, Lucas. I've never seen the strange friends. Okay, all right, let's do this. They're both <laughs> really good, and, and they're both um, interesting. I watched them like a little bit See, I don't even, I don't know their names, so, yeah. I know right. one, the, the guy, one guy in a wheelchair, and his name is Hank or something. <laughs> You're right, Nicholas. This one's about Hank and Joe. So here we go. Um, all right. Hank and Joe, here we go. <laughs> you know, you can tell a lot about an object by looking at its name. What do you mean exactly? For example, a unicycle has one wheel. Uni means one. Perfect. A bicycle has two wheels. Bi means two. I see what you mean. A tricycle has three wheels. Tri means three. So by looking at the name alone, you can figure out the number of wheels on each of these cycles. Quadricycle. Yeah, well, quadrilateral means four. Good. I know. It's like a quadrilateral. So that beginning of quad means four. Just as you can tell a lot about a cycle by looking at its name, you can tell a lot about a shape by looking at its name. Let's look at some examples. Right. A polygon is a closed two-dimensional figure with three or more straight sides. All of these shapes are polygons. All right, so this is good to point out. Yeah, exactly, that these are two-dimensional. Well, three-dimensional, then we start getting into something else. But polygons are just, right, these polygons are just two-dimensional. Oh, I thought Lucas was raising his hand. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and then we notice that they have at least three sides, and so the smallest one would be a triangle. And then we're going to learn what each of these shapes are. Um, and you're going to start to recognize this forever. Those beginning um, parts of the word will mean either one, two, three, four, or five, or six. Click on the shape that is a polygon. Okay. Nicholas, do you want to tell me which shape is a polygon? Trapezoid. Number okay. two. That's right. Because it is closed. It is two-dimensional, and it has at least three sides. And it has no curve. And it ha right. A polygon is named according to the number of sides. Angles. And vertices it has. Based on the number of sides, 
angles and vertices, we know this polygon is a triangle. So just like a tricycle has three wheels, a triangle has three sides, angles and vertices, right? Exactly. <laughs> Let's look at a few more polygons. How many sides does this polygon have? Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. All right, go ahead, Lucas. Four. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. How many angles does this polygon oh, have? Man. Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. What do you think, Lucas? This one's yours. Four. Yeah. <clears throat> How many vertices does this polygon have? Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. Yep, and we're holding up our fingers, and Lucas, go ahead. Four. That's right. Based on the number of sides, angles, and mm. vertices of this polygon, what do you think its name is? Click on the circle next to the answer of your choice. So we just kind of, I, I mentioned it, what four sides or something that means four means. Um, did quadrant. anybody catch that? Go ahead, Nicholas. Quadrilateral. Perfect. And Jacob also typed it into the chat. Good job. That beginning, that quad means four. How many sides does this polygon have? Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. All right, let's let, let's let Jacob do this one. How many sides does this shape have, Jacob? You could type into the chat. Perfect. We'll fill in the rest of this chart for this polygon. It has five angles and five vertices. Notice the pattern. For each polygon, the number of sides, the number of angles, and the number of vertices is the same. This figure is called a pentagon. Penta means five. How many angles does this polygon have? Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. Well, let's see. One, oh, okay, so we're going to angles. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just kind of went to those angles. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all right. The number of sides and vertices are the same as the number of angles. This figure is called a hexagon. Hex means six. How many vertices does this polygon have? Enter the number in the space provided, then click on the check button. All right, and Jacob did this one for us. He said that there are eight vertices, and that would mean eight sides and eight angles. The number of sides and angles will be the same as the number of vertices. Based on the number of sides, angles, and vertices of this polygon, what do you think its name is? Click on the circle next to the answer of your choice. <laughs> All right, Nic <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> Go ahead. Octagon. It's an octagon. Great. And Jacob also typed it into the chat. So you can see how the name of a polygon can tell you how many sides, angles, and vertices it has. All right. Now we get to work with this. Now that we know how they are named, let's identify a few polygons. What is the name of this polygon? Click on the button of your choice. Okay, well, let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it also has six angles and six vertices. So do you remember which one of these meant six? Lucas? Six. Well, yeah, that's right. And it is called what, Nicholas? Hexagon. Hexagon. That the means between a vertice and an angle. That's right. Hex meant six. Good. All right. What is the difference between a vertice and an angle? Oh, okay. A vertice means where these two lines, like it's that point. Okay, it's that oh. it's the point where the two lines connect. Um, the angle itself, I'm kind of showing you right here, is the inside measurement. Always up to. Yeah. And Jacob has typed in that this stop sign, which you guys see every day is called an octagon, probably because it has eight sides and eight angles. Yeah. 
All right, Lucas, this one's for you. One, two, three, four, five. Do you remember which one of these meant five? Um, hexagon? Hexagon was six. Octagon Pentagon. is eight. Triangle means three. Pentagon? That's right. Quadrilateral is four, so pentagon is five. Good. Oh, this one's easy. Everybody. Triangle. Thank you. Triangle. <laughs> yeah. All right. This one has four sides, four vertices, and four angles. Which one meant four? Nicholas? Quadrilateral. That's right. This okay, time you'll be asked to choose a specific polygon out of a group. Click on the quadrilateral. All right. Um, Lucas, tell me which one of these shapes is a quadrilateral. Um, the top one, the top blue, rounder, sort of red. Um, well, look at the name, quad. Quad meant four, right? Four sides, four vertices, and four. Yeah, the, the orange. The orange, perfect. Good job. Click on the hexagon. All right, Nicholas, which one do I need to click on? B. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good, because it has six sides. Click on the octagon. All right, Jacob, which one do I need to click on? Okay, he's typing into the chat. He thinks the third is an octagon. Let's just check. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven. That has seven. I'll click on it anyway and see what happens. Oh, the top one. That's right. This one had the eight sides. What is seven called? Well, you know, I don't think we have a polygon name for it, but the um, like Latin root or whatever is called sept. So it'd be S E P T. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't really talk about things with seven sides. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> Lucas. The octagon is like octopus because eight arms. That's right. And so now you're starting to realize there's a connection here between math. Yeah, between math and language arts and just the rest of the world in general, that those beginning um, parts of the word, they show up everywhere. Octagon means eight or octa. And so octopus, there you go, has eight legs. Octocycle? Here is your chance <laughs> yeah, to review right. the polygons we have looked at in this episode. Create a different polygon by clicking and dragging to change the number of sides, angles, and vertices. Click play when you are ready to continue. Okay, well, let's see here. Yeah, that's definitely one. I want to go, octagon is probably the biggest we can get. All right. I'm happy with a hexagon. Let's see. All right. And we did great. That was pretty easy, I thought. Let's go back. Yeah, that was not bad at all. Easy. Really easy. Yes, it was. So here we go. Let's do just a little practice. <coughs> Okay, is this shape a regular polygon? Oh. You don't think so, Nicholas? How come? Um, wait, hold on. Regular meaning. Uh, and we actually haven't mean? talked about regular. Well, let's look. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I forgot where I started. You started at the eighty-three. Can I start like, here? Um, if not, one way to tell if it's uh, odd is to look if they're the pair the top and the bottom are parallel. Right. If they are, then it's even. But so, do you think this is? Yeah, Jacob is saying no. And it is actually a regular polygon. And the reason is, is because all of these angles and all of the sides are the same. And it is a closed two-dimensional oh. 
figure. So it's a polygon, but it is a regular one. Yes. All a polygon is regular if all of its sides have the same length and all of its angles have the same measure. So just kind of remember this. A polygon is regular if all of the angles are the same size. Okay. Oh, now here we go. Now, is this a regular polygon? Nope. No. Because look, I have different angles that are different sizes and different sides that are you know, different. Yay. Hey. Lucas, is no. this a polygon? No, definitely not. No. No. It's an alien polygon. <laughs> not a polygon at all. Oh, here we go. Is this a regular polygon? No. No, no. it's not. It, this is confusing because at least two of them are the same. But it, all of them have to be the same for it to it's be. It's a parallelogram, but not a regular polygon. Right. Yay! <laughs> Ooh, how many sides does a nonagon have? We haven't talked about non as the, um, you know, how many that means. What do you guess? Nine. You want to guess nine? Okay. Yeah. Yay! Good job. Seven was um, sept. So I'm going to type into the chat. So everybody just look at their chat for a, se um, a second. The beginning part of a word that starts with sept means seven. And non, like you just saw, meant nine. Okay. Like octa, like we were just talking about a second ago, means eight. Um Hex means six, and so forth. Okay, so I think we're pretty good on polygons. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of going fast so that we have a little bit more time to at least watch this brain pop on triangles. Oh, got to log in. All right. <laughs> it won't take long. <laughs> All right. And sorry, it logged me off, but we'll get to it easy enough. Okay, so we'll have just about enough time to watch this brain pop. And then I actually left you with a little bit more that you can preview about quadrilaterals. We already know a lot about quadrilaterals though, right? Because they have four sides. Algebra. Yes, well. I love algebra. Algebra is a awesome. fun topic. All right. Very good. Where's my triangles? Wait, how did you get that one? He tried to poly, poly, uh, uh. Oh, you can definitely watch the polygon one later. I want to watch the triangle one for now. Polyhedron. I like polyhedron. They're awesome. Strike? Yeah, strike. Whoa. Okay, time out. Dear Tim and Moby. I need to draw all the types of triangles. Can you help? From Liza. A triangle is any three-sided polygon. A triangle's three angles always add up to 180 degrees. We classify triangles by both their angles and by the lengths of their sides. Equilateral triangles have three sides of equal length. Since the sides are equal, the angles of an equilateral triangle all measure 60 degrees. Isosceles triangles have exactly two sides that are the same length. The angles will have different measurements depending on the triangle shape, but two of the angles will always be equal. Scalene triangles have three sides of different lengths. Every angle in a scalene triangle is different from every other angle. Correct. 
equilateral, isosceles, and scalene triangles are all classified by comparing the lengths of their sides. <coughs> yep, I did say that we also classify triangles by comparing their angles. Let's take a look at those. Right triangles have one right angle that measures 90 degrees. The long side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, and the two sides that form the right angle are called the legs. Acute triangles have three acute angles. An acute angle is one that measures less than 90 degrees. Obtuse triangles have one obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is any angle that measures more than 90 degrees. So we've got six types of triangles. Those that are classified by comparing their sides, equilateral, isosceles, and scalene triangles, and those that are classified by comparing their angles, right, acute, and obtuse triangles. Right, there's some overlap here. All equilateral triangles are also acute triangles because their angles are all less than 90 degrees. You might find a right triangle that's also a scalene triangle. An isosceles triangle can be a right triangle, but it can also be acute, or obtuse for that matter, and so on. Well, it just depends on whether you're looking at the sides or the angles. Mm, okay, but it's my turn to pitch. <laughs> All right, Moby, you're ready for the heat? Ow! All right, guys. So we are about out of time today, but I just wanted to... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on just a so second. The yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to direct you back to um, the agenda that I had sent out. We do have another little quadrilaterals um, practice that you can do. I can also save these for next time. Um, remember, we do not meet on Monday. Uh, we meet on Thursday of next week because it's just kind of a funky week. Um, but hopefully you had fun today and remember you can always go back to these links because I have linked all of these games and practice assignments for you. Yes, Lucas. Do we meet on uh, the Monday at all? Nope, no virtual classrooms on Monday of next week. Um, we are just going to do book club on Thursday of next week. <clears throat> and then after okay. that, everything's normal again. Okay. All right. Well, let's wave goodbye to everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Good job today. Yay. Hey, um, Ms. Brown? Yeah? You know the uh, protractors that have the flexible arm things that can never end? Uh-huh. Um, I'm going like, to get one of those pretty soon so I can actually show you how to draw them. Bye. Oh, that would be awesome. Bring it to the virtual classroom and we'll definitely let you hold it up. All right, guys, have a good day. <laughs>